So we saw early on in this fight that Mark Magsaya would try to time Gary Russell with counter punches, which is a very smart game plan going in. Russell with the fast hands will always pose a difficult obstacle for anyone who cannot deal with it, and as the saying goes, timing negates speed. So as we see here, Gary Russell is going to step in with a jab here, and then we see that Magsayo attempts to slip to the inside, and then he attempts to follow up with a counter right. Because you see, in a high level of boxing, return fire is likely coming. So as you see, Russell rolls under automatically after throwing his punch to avoid a possible counter to remain defensively responsible. Notice as he rolls under, he also smothers Magsayo to remain defensively responsible. He doesn't have to see the punch coming, he just punches and rolls under. And then in this example, we're gonna see Russell shoot a jab and automatically roll under Magsayo's counter. And as Magsayo is trying to time Russell's punches, we're gonna see Russell's gonna try to attempt again. He's gonna line up a straight left hand, which Magsayo is able to see and attempt a counter. But as you see, Russell once again rolls under the counter. So before moving on, I want to briefly touch on a trick Russell displayed in the sequence and more early in the fight. And that trick is creating pressure by stepping forward with the lead foot only. Notice here as Russell is moving forward, he's going to step forward, but here he's going to step his lead foot forward only and keep the rest of his body back. By stepping his lead foot forward, he brings himself into punching range, but makes it look like he's still out of range by keeping his body back. As you can see, the big distance between the green line, which is his front foot, and the red line, which is his head. This can help you set up a punch if your opponent doesn't notice this because you're in range. So from here we see Russell extend his lead hand, and extending the lead hand further sells the trick because it still appears out of range as you see it's still short of Magsayo's head. If Russell can't reach Magsayo with his fully extended lead hand, then Magsayo should feel safe here. However, since the lead foot position is what determines distance, Russell only has to bring his body further over his lead foot to be able to reach Magsayo. So basically he actually is in punching range. And then we see Russell shoot the straight left hand, which clearly is able to reach now that Russell has brought his body over his lead foot. But as you can see, Mark Masayo is still able to see through it and is able to slip to the outside and attempt a counter over the top. And Russell, with the built-in defense, of course, rolls under the counter. And this trick is something I mentioned Shakur Stevenson does to pressure Jamel Herring in my film study of their fight. And it's also something Canelo does, stepping that lead foot forward in order to put the pressure on their opponent. As you see, Gary Russell does the same thing. And as one of my commenters mentioned, the secret to being able to do this is to actually step forward with the rear foot first. And that way, if as long as you keep a wide enough stance, you're able to get your lead foot even further forward to really creep that lead foot forward and get the pressure on your opponent. However, back to the main point of Russell rolling under counters, there's no such thing as a foolproof defense. As Magsayo tried multiple different counters, he quickly found that the counter uppercut to the body was the answer to catch Russell rolling under. He made this adjustment and gave Russell a lot of trouble in the first four rounds with this. So you see Russell enter with the jab, and he begins to roll under the expected counter. However, since his body is still in place, Magsayo is able to land the right uppercut counter to the body. And like I said, Magsayo had a lot of success with this in the early rounds. Russell had an adjustment to make, but landing this right hook while his shoulder is stretched out in a compromised position aggravated whatever injury he had and turned him into a one-armed fighter for the rest of the fight. With only his left arm, Russell opted to fight the rest of the fight defensively, shooting the straight left as Magsayo comes in, given that Magsayo upped the aggression as he should. However, Russell still had to deal with the counter right uppercut. So as you see, Russell's going to try to counter Magsayo's jab with a straight left, and this draws out the counter right uppercut. So instead of staying in place and rolling his head after punching, Russell slips his head and simultaneously steps out to the right, away from Magsayo's right hand. This step moves his body away from the counter uppercut, and the slip still keeps him defensively responsible from a counter over the top from Magsayo. And we're going to see the same thing here. As Magsayo attacks, Russell's going to step back, shoot the counter left, 
and then step out to his right outside of Magsayo's shoulder and you see a counter doesn't even come from Magsayo because Gary Russell stepped out. And once again we're going to see another example where Magsayo is going to push Russell back into the corner, pressure him, and Russell's going to look for the counter left and as he shoots the counter left he's going to slip out and step out to his right to avoid the counter uppercut from Magsayo again. And so Magsayo didn't have a definitive adjustment to this stick and move strategy from Russell. Each time Magsayo got in punching range, the same straight left would come from Russell, and Magsayo couldn't find a consistent counter for this. And against the guy throwing one punch, the counter possibilities are endless. And so this next segment sums up how a big chunk of the remainder of the fight went. As you see, Magsayo is going to come in and is going to shoot a naked left hook, which as you see Russell counters with that left hand and he steps out to avoid any counter from Magsayo. And I'm, at this point I'm thinking to myself, stuff I want to see more from Magsayo, like where are the feints? Maybe feint Russell out of position, feint him and get Russell to shoot the left hand, walk him into a trap or walk him into the ropes where you could land a punch, or bait out that left hand where you could counter him. And since Russell only has one usable hand, he's more control of the one hand that Russell can use. Russell can't use his lead hand to hand fight, so Mike Sire could use his lead hand to control Russell. He could use it to blind him, he could force him to shoot the left hand, or even use his lead hand to pin Russell's left so that he can't even use it. And even Mike misses punches like this like this left hook that's easily seeable, he could use it to smother Russell and fight on the inside. I know I'm just playing armchair boxer right now, but I couldn't help but think these things as, I, as the rounds were going on. To give an example of what Magsayo could have done, we look at what Lomachenko did to Gary Russell. As you see, Lomachenko uses his arm to control Russell's arm and pin them down so he can't use them, and this will set up this right hook from Lomachenko. And Magsayo wouldn't even have to worry about the counter right hook. And we're actually going to see the same thing happen from the other side in just a few seconds. So as we see Lomachenko, he's going to do a feint to get Russell's guard up, then jab, and then we see the control again. He uses his right arm this time to control him so that he can land this left hook to the body. And once again, Magsayo wouldn't have to worry about that counter right hook. And even if Magsayo misses a punch like this and ends up getting countered, what he could do instead, like we're about to see from Lomachenko, is that when he misses the punch, he immediately smothers Gary Russell. And this not only protects him from a counter, but also allows him to start working on inside fighting. And if Magsayo does that, he'll be at a huge advantage since Russell's only fighting with one arm. And in the end, Magsayo did what he had to do to get the decision victory. Once Russell was unable to use his right arm at all, I thought the fight was over, however Russell boxed well to stay in the fight. And like I said, Magsayo did what he did to win the decision, but at that point I really wanted to see a knockout instead. But just like a father successfully returning from a milk run, some things are just too good to be true. As always, thank you everybody for watching, and special thanks to my GOAT tier patrons, Jason Mahinen, Grant Gabriel, Dmitry Drozdov, Albert Chen, Jeff, and Andre. You guys keep the channel going. And I know some of you guys might be thinking, am I going to be doing Keith Thurman versus Mario Barrios? I don't know, maybe. Uh, stay tuned to find out, and subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you all for watching.